So I hold the treasure in my hands. I bought it on Vimeo. And um, yeah, tonight we talk about this album. And okay. it is a com collaboration uh, with Rosa Passos, the famous jazz or Brazilian vocalist. And uh, this album is called Entre Amigos, Between Friends. So um, how did you guys meet? Well, I knew her from my trips to Brazil uh, with, with various groups of Joe Beam and, and various projects, uh, but I never worked with her before. And uh, one of my students uh, named Cliff Corman, who is now teaching down in Brazil near Rio, uh, had this project ultimately. And he called me one day from uh, class and said that he was doing this project with this Brazilian singer named Rosa Passos. And uh, somehow the bass player that they had in mind was not unavailable and would I do the project for them? And I said, well, I'm not sure what, what, what's the project. And he explained to me they had some arrangements at uh, certain people they hired, you know. And I said, well, you know, I, I don't like to kind of walk into these projects as a co-leader without having some kind of input. You know, I, said, I think it's not comfortable for me and, and I'm not sure if the people who are on this record will trust my judgment, you know, and, and know what I do other than my name, you know, and, and uh, right now I'm not going to say, yeah, let me think this through, and you know, so I talked to the to the company, uh, the Chesky guys, Dave, you know, and he said, well, no, 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 it's a good project, you should do it, you'll, you'll like her singing, the chair arrangements are nice, I said, okay, because uh, I asked you to trust me, so I'm going to trust you, so I called him back, Mr. Corman, and said, uh, Okay, the company in person said I should go ahead and do this project, so I'm in. So we made arrangements, got to the studio, and made the record. So you okay. worked with so many um, famous vocalists, with Aretha Franklin, Roberta Flack, and so, so many. What makes Rosa's voice special for you? Well, it isn't just her voice that she plays the guitar as well. I think that helps her phrase as if she's playing guitar rather than singing. And uh, she, she sings in the right key for her. You know, she knows harmony. She understands the kind of notes that makes her sound really great that not unless she play them, but she kind of expects to hear them along the way. And my job is kind of let her be surprised and I play something else. And uh, again, she's a wonderful guitar player, you know. And I, I enjoy watching her play because she's got the chops and got the harmonic skills and, and uh, we're really fun. Uh, I think I've, I, she's kind of like a, she has a way of accompanying herself on guitar that's really great. And for what I have to add, it's not very much because she does so well with her own accompaniment, you know. She's kind of like a, the Shirley Horn on as a guitar player. You know, Shirley Horn plays great chords for herself. Great tempo, great keys. All I got to do is find the right one for her. And Rose has the same, same situation. She knows where she wants the tempo to be, she understands the lyrics of the song. She knows how to make her phrases just stop when they're supposed to stop. And she understands that my job is to help her make those places a little more comfortable for her. And I did that pretty good. And I'm curious about the set list. Who made the set list? Oh, they did. I just walked in there and gave, they gave me the order of the songs and just what we did. I had no input to that at all. Uh-huh. And are you happy with the set list? Um, well, I, I, I think that they had to make decisions without me being consulted. And, and uh, my job, uh, Fanny, if I can call you Fanny. Yes, of course. My, my, my job is to make it work. I'm not going in there trying to impose my, my programming concepts on them. Or I'm not there to, to impose my preference of order of songs. That's not what I do. My job is to have them happy they made me as a bass player. And to do that, I try to do my job. And my job is not to contest those things. That's a, you see you want that set list? Do you mean that? Do you have a story in mind? Okay, let's make that story happen. And it's a great story. It is a yeah. great story. Yeah. It it's, is a great, a great it's a great plan. All I had to do was play. I wish I had more input. You know, I would like to have made add some different songs or different tempo, but they made those decisions, and so, and my job is to make those decisions the right ones for them. That is a very kind approach. Yeah. 
It was a good record. I'm, su- I'm, I'm disappointed that it didn't get the Grammy that year. I thought it was a great non-jazz record. And I was surprised and disappointed that whatever record won, it was okay. But I thought that they were not in, they were not in this record's class. That by I mean, this record was above everything else for me. You know. So I'm curious, um, how did you get in touch the first time with Bossa Nova with this type of music? Yeah, uh, my first uh, meeting was with uh, with Carl and uh, Jovim. Uh, he was working with, I think, a uh, Verve or with Creed Taylor with A and M, perhaps. And uh, Stan Getz had just made a real big record with him and and the singer, and and the Brazil '69. They had made a big splash in the music scene in the states. You know, you made it famous all around the globe. Yeah, well, they did their share, and uh, when they came to New York to record with Creed Taylor. I was working with Creed doing other projects, and he thought that I'd be a good person to play with this person named Antonio Car- Antonio Carlos Jobim, who wrote some nice he said some nice songs. I said, "Well, I don't know his music, but let's try to see if it works." And so we go to the, go to the studio, and uh, I met Antonio Tony. I, I call him Tony. I met Tony, and he said, uh, "I said I'm Ron Card. How are you?" And he said uh, he spoke not much English, but enough to understand my questions. You know, he said. Well, Creed Taylor explained to me that you're his favorite bass player. He thinks that I could help your project. And he said, well, if Creed said that's okay, that's fine with me. So here we go. We made the record. Made, made about six records, actually, together. And uh, I've, I've enjoyed every one of them today as we listen to them again. And A you lovely made, band. Sorry. And uh, also Wave. You were on Wave, on the, on, on, on the famous record Wave. Stoneflower, a couple of them. I know, a, very, a huge success. So, yeah. And you recorded with Astrid as well, Astrid Gilberto. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Got a small studio down in Man- lower Manhattan, you know. Uh, she had some songs she wanted to record with a small group. And, and uh, the guy said, was I av- the, her producer said, was I available? I said, well, I'm not available that day, but I'm available two days after because I have some other things to do. And he said, well, if we can change the dates, we'll hire you. And if not, I said, okay, I, It's a business, and they were able to change the date to, be, to fit my availability. And uh, she's another, she's really a nice lady, man. She understands music. She understands how the band can help her do what she wants to do. So that's fun playing with her. Wow! And the atmosphere in the sessions, or in these sessions, how was the atmosphere? Were you aware that you will change music history and make? No, I, I, I'm just. I'm just making the music. That's that's completely out of my out of my control, uh, out of my awareness. All I know is I'm trying to play the best I can to make this music what they hope it can be, and trusting that they have made me partially responsible for the results of their concept. Okay. My job is my job is to make that concept okay. I don't, I'm not concerned with whether it be famous or not so famous or well-known, that's something I don't consider at all. You know? And you often said in interviews or in the last interviews I heard that you consider yourself as the architect of a group sometimes or that you, yeah, compare yourself or your bass play with them, with the metaphor of an architect, of being an architect. Mm-hmm. I think that the bass players are, if they understand, I think they don't understand the power of the instrument. They don't understand how much control they have over the music, you know. Uh, to do that, you have to understand a lot of things: harmony, you know, form, you know, intonation, you know, rhythm. There's a lot to do to feel you can affect the thoughts of somebody else on the bandstand. And and a lot of bass players, I think, they are not really aware of how much input they have. To anybody's music, I don't care who the band leader is. Uh, and once they get comfortable with that concept, it's kind of frightening to know that they're so responsible for everything, not just going to work and playing bass and solo. You know, that's just not the entire job. You know, you may go to a gig and may not play a solo all night. Does that mean that you're a failure? It means that you didn't do something. Else. I don't know. I don't know how those guys feel who don't who just don't have the pink light on them all night. You know, they're not the featured guy you know, of, a, of a group. I, I, that's how they feel, okay, you know. Uh, but I think I have more fun 
And I tell the band leaders, look, if, if I don't solo for a week with your band, I'm fine. I'm playing enough nice notes behind you to make me be important. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. That's a great way to, yeah, that's, that is so interesting. That is so interesting that you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because usually I, I have in mind that um, a bass player has an important role, but I think, uh, and this is also because I'm so curious about your point of view and um, it made it very clear to me now what your approach is. And that is really, really special. I Wait, really, yeah. No, go ahead. Um, my students who I love, uh, they ask, uh, what do they do when they get a call for a job they don't know or music they're not sure of, you know, or a group? You know? I tell them that there are two things you really have to do. One, leave your ego at home. And two, take some second ears so you can hear what they're trying to do better. If you do those things, you'll have a good time. And they will want you to come back for the next gigs. Yeah. Um, do you speak Portuguese or? Um... I did when I was going down there often. I would go to Brazil, South America, uh, Rio, Sao Paulo, maybe twice a year for three or four years. And I learned enough language to be able to go to a restaurant and how to order a meal and understand what the conductor was asking me to do in Portuguese. But I haven't been there in two years. And, and uh, what little I knew, it's, it's, <laughs> it's gone right now, you know. I can say three or four words, obrigado, but I don't speak the language like I used to. I miss saying that, you know. And in New York, there are a lot of Brazilian restaurants. They really have great food. And, and, and uh, right now, I can't even go there because of the limitations on that kind of social gathering. So whatever I knew, it's gone. Nothing but dust and memories. But no. we, we, I'll get back. I'll get back, you know. Yeah. You, so you have been there for um for a lot of times or in your life, a lot of trips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. My friend Milton, Milton is my dear friend. Ayato and Flora, El Miato, you know, Robertinho Silva. I have some nice, the owner of a club, uh, Pedro Paolo. I have a lot of nice friends down there and, and I miss seeing them. I miss, I miss learning the language again, talking with them, you know. A lot of them don't want to speak English. Only Portuguese. I said, okay, let me show me some words. And then either or Clorax. Just, just, just really nice, nice people who I met down there. And I, I miss messing up their language. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a beautiful language. I think it's yeah. so worth to learn it and also to know the songs by heart. Yeah. They're really beautiful songs. Yeah, she's so. a really, she is a wonderful singer. Had good addiction, good articulation, mm -hmm. the melody, you know, she understands the harmony, and she plays it really good on guitar. So it's fun to watch her do what she does. I've gone to several of her. When she came to New York maybe four years ago at, at, at the Lincoln Center, I had a chance to sit in front of her and watch her just sing so, and it's just amazing to see her just be in charge of the music. It was really great to watch her. So, um, Last thing, um, so when you play bass, when you play bass and you play bossa nova, do you play differently? Do you transform it into jazz or do you just play? I play the music. You know, my, of course, my, my background, my history, my experience as a, a jazz bass player in terms of music, but uh, jazz and bossa nova have the same notes. They have the same harmony a different order, but the same harmony chords exist in Brazilian music. They have the same technical skills necessary. I just think what I do is try to make their rhythms fit my jazz sensitivities and my jazz sensibilities. And sometimes that works really great. Other times that works just plain great. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, see you, bye. Uh, I'll see you, Zane. Auf Wiedersehen, Ron. <laughs>